Well, the moment uh, many of us have been waiting for, we will now hear a reading from the manuscript that has won first prize in the 2015 Young Australian Christian Writer Award. I was jolted awake by a sharp slap across my face. I was sitting upright in my bed, looking frenziedly about for my attacker. The paranoid expression on my face must have spoken volumes, for a nasty little snicker drifted out of the shadows in the opposite corner of the room. Only Dairy, who would have thought that proud little sister of the great Kivan Dumortis could sink so low? Who's there? Why do you whisper, Dari? There is no one here but you and I. She stepped out of the shadows and I caught my breath. I was dreaming, I had to be dreaming, for the creature standing before me was an immortal. She was me, but not me. Her eyes were murky, her skin almost grey, such was its unhealthy pallor. This other me looked dead. Am I dreaming? I asked. For the first time in my life, I actually trying to restrain my temper. The other me laughed. Her eyes twinkled merrily. You may have plummeted to the depths, child, but I am pleased to see that you are at least untainted by the plague of cowardice. And you seem to have at least had a tentative grasp on reality. I glared. What is this about? I grow weary of watching you wallow in your self-pity. You sob and you sigh about being useless to your allies, but you will not even move a muscle to fix your situation. How can I? My sword was destroyed. Excuses. Do you think any executioner or assassin wields the blade he or she used as a novice when they achieve master status? They have all lost their blades in one way or another, and they have all discovered what a real weapon is. You have never seen your brother get even remotely serious in a battle, but do you honestly think that the House of Springs Watcher paid money for her bow and those enchanted arrows? She may be a weak and spineless little thing, but her arrows complement her fighting style to perfection. That is something that money cannot buy. I don't understand what you're telling me. If she did not fashion or buy her weapon, then when she, where could she possibly have gotten it from? Infuriation sparked across the, across the other me's face, and she looked like she wanted to tear me to pieces. A little tremor raced up my back as I realised the last place I had seen this look was in the eyes of the Dark One that had destroyed my sword. Maybe it's time for me to take over, the dark girl suggested. Instead of walking upright, you have been hobbling around bearing a burden of imagined wrongs. How can you fight with a crooked spine? I do not know what has happened to you, Nadira, but it has crippled you. You have nothing to offer me. Now I realised exactly what I was looking at. This was the me of only a few days ago. Arrogant, irritable and completely full of myself and she was trying to get back into control. Gavan is right. Immortal kind are dry, drowning in an ocean of apathy. I squeezed my eyes shut and shook my head, doing my level best to clear it out of the cobwebs. But when I opened my eyes again, she was still there. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2015 Young Australian Christian Writer Award is Tim Sharp for his manuscript, Undying. Tim, please join us on stage. Uh, last year's winner, Heidi Waddell, will present Tim with his certificate and prize. I'm gonna invite Heidi up on stage as well. Tim, this is what the judges had to say about your manuscript, Undying. The realms are at war and all creation is in peril. Our narrator is a young assassin on a mission which brings her from her realm to ours. The action is unpredictable, and until the end, her survival is in doubt. Characters develop and mature realistically and offer insights into human nature. A bold plot delivers a powerful warning and a message of hope. Thank you, Tim.
Um, so yeah, I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, I don't really win things, so uh, that was awesome. Um, as, uh, yeah, first and, first and, first and foremost, um, thank you to Sparklet for running this um, and just giving young writers something to aim for and um, a way to actually get their writing out there. Um, I'd also like to yeah, just thank the few people who have been around and um, encouraged me and also given me the heads up about what's actually going on here. Um, and also, um, yeah, so thank you to Rob Wickstead especially for telling me about Sparklet. Um, and, and there was uh, also a young lady named um, Caroline Zaki who sent in the copy of the manuscript that she printed out for herself because I wasn't going to have time to do it before the cutoff date. So without her, um, I wouldn't have actually been even in the running. So that was, that was really good of her to do. And, um, and my mother and my sister, Ellie and Amy Sharp, who were the first to read Undying and actually convinced me that it could probably go somewhere. Um, and then there was, oh, obviously my dad, who has shaped my worldview and and um, who's always been very, very consistently and constructively critical of um, what needs to go into a story and what doesn't need to go into it for the sake of realism. So thank you to them. And uh, thank you to Emily Chesley for repeatedly reading drafts of Undying and giving really good editing. And thank you to my wife, Rachel, who, even though it's not quite, I think, her style of book, she's been really supportive of it. And she always encourages me to write instead of. Um, she always encourages me to write instead of do things like play computer games and stuff like that. So, um, a massive thank you to her. It's been very, very good. And um, yeah, and the most important one, obviously, is thank you to God, who was, um, yeah, who just kept at me and uh, helped me to get the story to a place where it was actually ready to be read um, by others. Fantastic. Thank you.